I, I would say like the majority of your day is taken up by uh, like tending to your uh, tending to the desire of wanting to break. Yeah, exactly. hundred percent. And that's just because I want to be the best. Yeah, and it's I was, cold. Yeah, my Come on. <laughs> but what do you think we're doing here? We're talking to talk. <laughs> KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, out on location, Derby, the north of the country, not too far north, but north enough for you to know better. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk, hold tight to everybody who's got a television app, it's sporting art, you know what I mean? For all your street culture sports, download it free, iPhone, Android. Um, now, inside the house, inside his house, inside his gymnasium, have a break dancing HQ in Derby. We have Smack 19, Nike, top boy, top of top boy, and uh, Team GB Olympic contender. The awesome Karab sing inside the place. Happy to be here, well, well happy to have you here, I say. <laughs> Thank you very much. No and problem, you know, man. I do feel like I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the epicenter. Of this, is, this is it, man. It's the heart of where it all is. It's that energy, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's that aura, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You feel the vibe in the room. Totally. Yeah. It, feels like, it feels like it's busy. Things are happening. Yeah. It's busy and it's also natural. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like uh, when you kind of go hard with ease, mm-hmm. sort of everything's happening, but I'm in control of it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to have it here. <laughs> sounds very spiritual. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, man. Find your, you find your, your, your tranquility here. Yeah, for real. I think it's like my sanctuary. Like, this is where I'm in my zone. Um, people come in here. People mm-hmm. are always welcome here. Mm-hmm. Um, but we take what's in here to the rest of the world. And, yeah, man, it's just, it's just this small package. That explodes. Yo! <laughs> there is something about b-boying that is almost one of a, a mad scientist. Like, you guys are locked away, trying things out that are unthinkable <laughs> and top secret, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just to go and explode somewhere else. Is that kind of like the deal? Yeah, 100%, 100%. And it's like, you always have to keep on creating. Mm. It's like you, like you said, you come up with these things that people can't even think about, people <laughs> never seen before. It's like, it's like how, how do you always keep on coming up with new things? How do you do something that nobody's ever seen before? Yeah. It's like, there's, there's a mad science behind it where you have to keep on keeping on. Mm. You have to keep on creating and then you showcase that to the rest of the world on the main stages or through social media videos yeah. and stuff like that. But generally, it's you prepare for war and create for war here and you explode on people. Yo, he said create for war. <laughs> yeah, you have to, man. It's like a strategic, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Let's talk about that strategy. Gee, I'm jumping straight <laughs> in. <everywhere. laughs> straight uh, in. You know, let's talk about strategy because, um, as you well, you can't see, but as you can see around here, if you're, if you're, if you're watching and not listening, uh, we, we definitely are in a quite a confined area. There is... Um, there, there, there's walls quite close by, mirrors everywhere, and just <laughs> obstacles. It's like you know some next level uh, funhouse going on here. But um, yeah, going to war, strategy, uh, the science behind it. Like, explain to me a day in the life. Explain to me the day in the life of Karam and how how you get to that optimum point in your day. So I'll I'll give you today for an example yes, of how it's fair. So I woke up today, you know, just. Easily get myself up, sort of take a shower and whatnot. After that, um, I will work out. So I've done an hour workout this morning. So it's more so body weight stuff just because I need to be explosive. I think that I used to use weights a lot um, just to, to feel good, but it makes me more stiff. So okay, I so Bryce, I just need to get into this. So <laughs> an hour session, does that is that does that alternate every day on different parts of the body or is it the same? Same, thing? same. It's like uh, all parts of the body, sort of core stuff, mm-hmm. pull-ups, sit-ups, press-ups. Um, car phrases, 
mm-hmm. stuff like that. V sits, just just basically stuff that I, as that terminate that it just kind of channels the muscles that I need sort of to be using. Yeah. For example, the show like the pull ups are so good. I yeah. always see them on my Instagram story. It's yeah. just because it's my way of. Uh, distracting myself it w- it was originally my way of distracting myself from other things mm. and I just sort of got like kind of good at them and I just started enjoying them and then I started getting really strong in breaking I was like I've never been this strong before so it started to sort of portray through that so yeah so I did an hour workout I did a 5k run as well mm. um, so yeah about a 30 minute run just for stamina wise for when I am competing for the longer days and how's like, that for your calves when you're running like that because obviously there's a lower back to consider when you're yeah. running and on impact? Uh, it is it is quite tough. It's quite hard, but I like the mental battle of doing something like a 5K. For example, today I stepped out, I was like, oh, here we go, but I really couldn't be bothered to do it. But then I thought to myself, I'm just going to push myself. Once you get past 1K, you're like, four more to go. Yeah. And then you do the next one, you do the next one. It's sort of like you're battling with yourself and you're challenging yourself. And I just sort of get all the thoughts that are sort of negative in my head or things where I want to be better and just think to myself, like, I want to be the best person I can possibly be. I want to be the best breaker. So I like to do them because it's more of a mental battle for me. It's not always like the physical. Don't get me wrong. It can be quite um, quite hard on the calves yeah. and the legs and the back and mm-hmm. stuff. But for me, I just think about like, when, 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 for example, I'm on the third or fourth kilometer and my legs are aching and I'm starting to get stiff, I'm like, okay, but if I was in a battle, and this was a five round final and we're in the third round what and my legs do? my legs are starting to go now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what am I supposed to do? I've got to push myself to get over that line. So that's sort it's more of like a mental thing, which is why I like running and when I finish uh, I feel good about it. It's an endorphin like, hit as yeah, well, yeah, right? Of course, like, yeah. You once you after like maybe three months of yeah. running you get used to it and you want more of it yeah you, you like you, you just want to keep on doing it mm. and it makes you feel good like I said I finished it and I'm like I've done a 5k today I feel good mm. that already and then I've done an hour of stretching and now we're doing this and then after that I'm going to come home and practice breaking for two or three hours with a with a gang in this small space two or three hours yeah. of breaking is that like the daily norm yeah it's a daily norm for sure sometimes I won't do a 5k every day maybe two or three times a week but uh, working out stretching and training Yo, that's cold. Yeah, man. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, you have to be, man. <laughs> yeah, you've got to be insane. Yeah, you've of got course. to be you've got to be um you've got to dream the impossible. And I know that sounds so profound and like the stars and the moons, but but there is a level of there's no reality to this. Yeah. It's it's actually how you just implement just what what you do, how you how you do it really. Mm. It's always about how you do it. But obviously with all the, the all the craziness that we do, we also have to care for our body a lot. So that's where the stretching and stuff comes in yeah. as well. We also, hot baths, things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Hot baths or cold showers and just, just like it really helps or conditioning and stuff. Mm. Like I had an injury recently, which I've just been monitoring like on my legs. It's been since like the end of last year on my yeah. groin yeah. really. And obviously I need my groin to be swinging and popping and stuff. But it's yeah. those little things that we also have to take into consideration. Like I said, with the legs and stuff in the back, it can be quite sort mm. of... And also I'd hard. imagine the rotate because groin oh. is like the rotator yeah. cuff as well. That can yeah. be quite shoulders tough. too. Yeah, yeah. Shoulders is another one. It's quite a common thing. But yeah, all the madness is there, but we also need to sort of <laughs> keep it keep it in check at times too. So for, yeah. for for an average of a day, how how much time do you spend on like stretching? About an hour. Forty five minutes to an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. I, I would say like the majority of your day is taken up by uh like tending to your uh, tending to the desire of wanting to break. Yeah, exactly, hundred percent. And that's just because I want to be the best. Yeah, and it's I was, cold. Yeah, I always, always wanted to be like that. Like some real talk. <laughs> I try and relay it in part with beatboxing. Yeah, and like the the the, the time that I was doing it and the kind of extremes I would go through. A lot of it hadn't even been. There wasn't even a fault line of like how to do certain things. Yeah. I just installed it naturally. Yeah. How much of it, like, do you take cues from previous b boy? You know, there isn't a manual. But mm-hmm. how much of it do you kind of exercise from historical reference points in in training? It's so hard, like, to think about that mm. because, like, it's a little bit weird for me because I'm I'm from an older generation, but I'm still so young. Mm. Like, because I started when I was like like eight, seven, or eight. Mm but I was on the world champ stage at 10, yeah. like with Trinity Warriors. So I was part of the crew battles mm. from UK champs and all this stuff from such young, like such a young age. Mm. So I've seen all these different things, but the way that it's progressed over the years now, and I'm just like here with the opportunities that I have now for the younger people that are under me as well, the opportunities that they have, it's like we actually now have a path to follow. Yeah. Whereas before we didn't really have that. We're just sort of copying or imitating people that, 
we thought, for example, for me, my favourite B-boy is Mouse. Mm. Um, oh my UK. God, come on. Yeah. It's always, uh, it's like, mouse, hold tight, mouse. <laughs> and it's always, um, some, it's not necessarily that there's a blueprint to follow him mm. or to do that, but I enjoy watching him break. Uh, he is style over anything else. It's not what he does, it's, it's the way he does it. Mm. And it's the simplicity of things that he does and he makes them look so special. So for me, like there's, they're, they're like type of things that I'll take from bits of pe- like pieces of my favourite mm. B-boys or people that, are potentially doing well in the world or winning all the major events. What is he doing that's making him win? Mm. So that's it's kind of like a constant thing where you're always looking back or looking at what's happening because yeah. we never really had a path. But now I kind of have a path with the Olympics and all the things that are sort mm. of going on and the jams and what you need to do to get to here and to there. But yeah, I would definitely say that like I've I've looked at not necessarily the blueprint of of a path of a person, but more so things that are that make people as breaker special for example mouse mm. in what he does or menno or, mm. or just Ooh. or just you know like somebody's musicality or some mm. something that basically separates the winners from the losers mm. and i sort of just try and see how i can be me while engaging in mm. things that are making people win 100 mm. percent sort of yeah. um you've got this new like you say opportunity to be forerunners of a different way of thinking in a different approach, yeah, with a whole new audience that may have heard of it before, yeah, or have definitely witnessed it in some capacity, <laughs> but just with a new philosophy, yeah, exactly. It's nuts because I always say I would like it because it gives us a definition, like with it being a sport mm. now and stuff. Because I, I tried to study dance at sick form, but it was more of an extreme sport, and he tried to do that sport, and it's a little bit more accepted mm. than it was in the traditional dance sort of thing, so. It's it's like now with the direction it's going, it's like it's not only just beneficial for me. It's, I'm I'm blessed because I'm still young mm. and I still have so many years to keep on doing this. Mm. Um, obviously, for the older people, they're still blessed because they have so much, so much opportunities surrounding it and surrounding the next generations. But especially for the young the mm. younger generations, it's like they have a path now. Yeah. They know what they need to do to get to this level. They know what they need to do to get to this. There's qualifiers for this and then there's mm. this. And if, if you do this, you'll get this. Whereas before, man, it was just complete freestyle, which is why now when I'm achieving the certain things that I am or the or I'm winning the major events that I am or getting major sponsorships, it's like you feel a little bit lost because you kind of like, oh, I ended up here. Yeah. And I guess it all came from all that work that I put in and everything that I did and all these other things that I did. Yeah. But like, it's kind of mad because you didn't, actually realised that anybody was paying attention sort of thing. So it's like, we were just doing it to do it and ho- in a hope of getting somewhere. Mm. And now we're getting somewhere, it's like, well, but before, we like, we never really had that. And now the kids can can look at this and be like, oh, we, if we do this, we can do it. And they're just progressing so much faster. And I think you can see that mm. in, in breaking. It's especially. the greatest reward as well, isn't it? To know that you spent all this time, you know, in the in the... Yeah. <laughs> in the barracks, you know, just trying to get it together, figuring stuff out and doing it for a real, a real love. Yeah. And, and I think timing also comes into play, don't it? Yeah, 100 percent, 100 percent. And it's also it's like purpose, I think, is one of the major things, purpose and timing. Mm. Like when when I started to explode again in like what, like 2007, 16, 17, mm. something like that. I was just training in my living room. Like I didn't even have a crew. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a crew or nothing at this time, so I'm just training in my living room, and it was such a good time for somebody new to step up and yeah. sort of sort of take over, and that that was what I did. Mm. Like I just sort of come did that. on, <laughs> come on. <laughs> but what, do you think, what do you think we're doing here? We're talking the talk. <laughs> That's it, man. But no, like it was like, and now again, timing is so important because of what's happening, mm. what's coming in the future. But it's sort of like just staying focused and just sort of taking your moments and staying hungry and having your goals sort of lead you. Into mm. one thing, like one thing to another, and salute yeah. to all the you know the peoples that were really pioneering of its time. I mean, of course, you know all that old school. Do you remember Crumbs from Star Of course, Star man. Elements? Everyone remembers Crumbs, man. Bro. Legend, <laughs> yeah, legend, absolute <laughs> legend. <laughs> now no. that was somebody very much in a mouse kind of sensibility. Yeah, just you know pulling, uh, you know the deck of cards will be falling, but he's just yeah. like figuring it out as he reassembles kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Like he's he's such an innovator. People mm. are doing his moves today. Mm. Like you know what I'm saying? People like. People call other people biters for doing certain moves, and it's Crumbs's move anyway. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like they're just they're major innovators. Like people like that are, are special, yeah. and it's nice to actually see like someone like Crumbs is actually still very involved in the scene. Yeah. He's still at battles, big time. Yeah, like, he's still beating people in battles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yo, it's so dope. Like Crumbs, like massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sick. Whole style elements. That whole <laughs> Bay Area. Thing. Definitely, and it's and it's nice when people have them clicks as well that are natural. Like there's a lot of crews and stuff in breaking. I love I love crew battles and crew vibes and stuff like that. But y- you can tell the special crews and the special individuals from the others because the vibe is just so real. It's like their own mm. thing sort of going on. The style elements had that, and that's why 
mm. they are, who they are, and why they're so respected. I think, yeah. and that's why they're just incredible breakers. I guess. Yeah, I love yeah. the I love the fact that the breaking scene, especially at one stage, really was so incubated, and it was like. It was almost like an in gang. Either you know them or you don't. Yeah, <laughs> it used to really Literally. be that vibe, yeah. wasn't it? No, hundred percent. It's like, and and it's and it's weird as well because it's like the popularity sort of played a played a point as well. Like I think that if you was cool or if you was not necessarily famous, but if you was popping, it was mm. like they had that them clicks. Mm. Them clicks were there, and then the outsiders were kind of the outsiders. It's kind of you know, like you said, you know or you don't. But mm. it, now it's just changed so much, especially I think because. As well, you know, because it's so solo based now. Yes. Everybody rolls on their own. They have their clicks still, but it's not the same as it mm. as it used to be. Why is that? It's just not enough crew battles anymore. Uh, um, collective I think things. yeah, it's just collective things. I think like a couple of things like I, I don't know exactly because I never planned an event. But mm. if you look at like a major event around the world, it's going to cost so much more to bring a crew out than it is to, to mm. bring a solo out. It's a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, a lot more organization for for example. I mean, breakers haven't always been the most professional or most on point. So you bring a whole crew out. You bring a whole crew out, and four of them miss their flight. You're like, what, yeah, what, what yeah, are you yeah, supposed yeah, to yeah. do now? Like, oh, so there's I think like a couple of different things that play a part. But obviously, with things going to the Olympics and becoming more of a sport, it's just been solo based mm. for quite a few years, especially with like the major brands like Red Bull mm. and stuff like that getting involved. So yeah, yeah you've just, had to pattern up. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot it's just yeah, up, right? it's just transitioned across, and everybody's had to pattern up, and we're still in that transition now, mm. um, leading up to when it is in the Olympics in 2024. Mm, yeah, mm, yeah, that's bonkers. Because a lot of, and I think this correlates in tow with the graffiti and the rap battle world as well. You know, there's an element of, um, there's an undertone to break dancing that it is, it's, it's risky, it's dangerous. I remember going to Paris and seeing these break dancers in the shopping mall and nearly a fight broke out, <laughs> nearly knives, knives were being pulled out, <laughs> other gangs that weren't even breakers were coming. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. there is that attitude that I think, um, we all want a piece of, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Do you reckon that would be transferred into the attitude of of how the Olympics approach things? Um, I hope so. Yeah, um, man. We're still we're still sort of looking at it because it keeps it raw and urban, doesn't it? Mm. Of course, obviously, we all have to be professional now, and there's a lot of regulations involved with it. Mm. But um, I mean, in the Youth Olympics, I think it was in 2018 mm. in Buenos Aires, it was the most watched sport. So wow. yeah, it was the most watched sport. There was like ninety thousand people in attendance. I heard, I think no something like way. that. Don't quote me on that, but like people were interested in it because of how it played out, mm. you know. And it might not be as raw as as other venues or other sort of battles or competitions and mm. stuff like that. And it might be a lot more, like I said, regulations involved. But I think you'll always have that that thing there because it's what's entertaining to people. Mm. Yeah, man. Yeah, so. it's entertainment. I mean, I, I, I see you as quite the entertainer. Yeah, you know I mean? like. <laughs> You you were talking about how certain characters get singled out. I think the audience really does build a rapport on people that... Oh, yeah. It's almost like the whole team can see, oh, oh he's coming out, oh, he's coming out. Yeah, again. yeah. Oh, shit, he's coming <laughs> out. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like to play on that, me personally. Mm. Like, I, I always think that... Um, I think I've seen it from movies and stuff. Like, if you win the audience, you have a good chance of winning the event. Cry kid style. And, and of course, of course, yeah. it's not like... It's not a script of that. But when you win the audience, you know you're entertaining, you know that you're doing well. And it don't always work at the smaller jams, but you go to events like Red Bull and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. when I did the, the Red Bull UK qualifier in 2020, the year that I won. So like real. the people commenting on the YouTube video, like, oh, he won because he was at home. Like, I'm not even from London. <laughs> I keep myself to myself. I'm here. Like, but like, Yo. you know, I just, I came there and I really entertained and I, and I felt so good about entertaining. And it gives you that confidence and that empowerment. It's like, mm. it's like, uh, you know, in, in football, they say you got like 12 men. It's like the 12th, the 12th man, because mm. you have that on your side and it's, it can always work against you as well, you know mm. what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. if somebody else is dope on the other side and somebody just does mm. a banging round, you just kind of can crumble. But <laughs> when when you entertain and you can win that, you have a good chance of sort of continuing yeah. through the event for quite a few stages, I think. Yeah, having your bros around you or, you know, your team yeah. around your te you. And then so obviously, yeah, your team come as well. Like, mm. that's that's always a, mm. it's always a backing. Like, the audience is one thing, but then you've got your, your crew and your friends and your family and stuff like that that are also backing mm. you you know, keeping you in check and stuff on the day, and especially when when you got people that want to see you win, like it's always always so like useful to have. Yeah, man. Yeah, and you're proud of where you're from, Derby. Hold yeah, tight. Of course, man. Talk to me about that. Like, how do your family? How do your family feel about this new, you know, level up? How do they feel yeah. about the the sudden, you know? You, it's like a, you've had a like a Mario mushroom, <laughs> <laughs> literally just yeah. do do do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Literally straight up there. Yeah. But no, like my family are blessed. Yeah. It's, it's quite good. Like they've always supported me through everything. Like all members of my family, they're also proud of me, and they'll just push me 
even my dad, he would just get onto me sometimes. He'd be like, "What you got new? What's new? Like, oh, what you got a trainer? Like he's he's like that. Oh, you know what I mean? Like yeah? he's onto me. Like you got any new moves or what? Like he's he's on me. Like and he'll come to the jams and stuff. People love my dad at the breaking yeah, events. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. he gets involved. Like he's he's cooler than me at the breaking jams. You know name? what I mean? Prem. Yeah, big up Prem. You know what time it is. Come on, come on, <laughs> come on. But like, even my brother will come to the jams. Like, we've all been involved in it at, mm. at some point or other. My sister, she'll make sure I'm in check, make sure I got everything that I need. Mm. So they just support me, and obviously, they'll just they'll just keep on supporting me no matter what, really. So it's it's quite good, and especially because I'm half Asian as well. Like, mm. it's not always the case in a lot of the families and support. So. Like, yeah. uh, why is that? Is that is that, is that a cultural thing? Uh, I think it has a lot of different sort of um, things behind it. Um, I think with breaking, it's obviously a little bit different because it's hip hop and it's universal. Mm. Um, but if you look, for example, at let's take another sport like football, we have like two or three South Asian players mm. in the top league, which is mad. And it's because there's no role models. One, there's no role models. There's nobody success. There isn't no Indian Cristiano Ronaldo. Mm. There isn't no Indian like. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, which is why I kind of try and break the barriers a little bit for something that's so urban. You know, like obviously there's there's a lot of stereotypes where families want their kids to go into something more profession, more high paid, and whatnot. Then and just generally, there's just loads of different things that sort of play a part. Obviously, there's also systematical racism and stuff course, that play yeah. a part as well. And not in hip hop though. Yeah, not in hip hop. So it's yeah. it's cool, but it's like nice. yeah, in sports in general. And then obviously the Asian guys would then you know go make their own micro leagues and separate themselves from the rest of society and stuff. Like you have like Asian football tournaments or yeah, Asian yeah, football yeah. leagues, which is different and. Like in 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 uh, in all sports, I think it's the same. Well, majority sports, let's yeah. say, on stereotypical wise, because yeah, yeah. obviously, if you look at other sports, there might be dominantly Asian players and stuff. But like with this, it's it's so universal. Uh, universal, sorry. Mm. And like my family have just always supported me. And f some people kind of feel a little bit shocked sometimes that like I'm from like an Asian culture. They're like, oh, like it's one of the questions I get all the time. Really? So how are your family? Like, do your family support you on this? I'm like. Yeah, yeah. And I also like you know what? You know what? It, it didn't even occur to me. All I, all I kind of was, where I was going with it. Yeah. As a, as a, as a conversation was more in, in keeping with Derby and being up north. And you know, this is, this is an attachment of your home. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and I thought to myself, wow, like you've got to have some pretty, and you've been doing this all your life. Bro. Yeah, of course. Like, yeah. You've got to have some sort of like yeah. sturdy family that. Even when Nike weren't there, yeah, they were there. Oh, 100%. You know what yeah. I mean? 100%. Like, they'd be taking me everywhere. Like, we moved into this house, and it was perfect. And we moved into this house with the option because we have a garage, mm. and I could train in here. So it's like, they, they, that becomes a part of life and family decisions and stuff. So they, they massively support me, yeah. like, 100%. But, like, being from Derby is cool because not just my actual family, but we have a close close knit society and say, yeah. it's it's and people obviously I've I did a, a recent sort of interview and stuff about Derby and stuff because we're going for like the maiden culture bid and, and whatnot but like people think that you have to get out of Derby to grow and in some cir so like some circumstances depending on what you do that okay yeah cool mm. but with breaking we have so many sick young breakers here we have Trinity Warriors yeah, yeah, one yeah, of the yeah. best oh, crews Trinity that, Warriors yeah, yeah man one of the best crews to ever come out of the yeah. UK steady mm -hmm. you know he was yep. he was Hold from here steady. like he made Trinity yeah, yeah. for us like and we have a good unit here where it's like we don't need to go to other cities and and connect. Mm. Like people want to come to us now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We have we have Hiya. a group here. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hiya, I'm here. Tells you whole time. Yeah, <laughs> but like, no, people want to come to us and be a part of this, and and you yeah. know, just because we're just so close. Like everybody knows everybody. Even the the music artists around here, mm. they'll support my stuff because I'm doing stuff for Derby. Big up drum sound, baseline Smith inside yeah. the place, baseline Smith. Gang, gang, <laughs> and and young young man too inside yeah, the place. Man. Yeah, man. But like, it's like people support each other because we're from Derby, mm. and it's nice to see things coming out of Derby mm. and it's also cool because we're so small and when we do go to bigger places like I said like we sort of explode but well when I when I was coming up the most important thing for me was that I was like the dark horse nobody nobody really thought I was a problem as such until I was a problem <laughs> you know what I'm saying and then <laughs> yeah. and now it's like what yeah. <laughs> But now you got a problem on your hands. Yeah, man. But like, it's no, it's no longer an incentive necessarily to go to London to be a dope breaker. No, it's, it's, this is where well, it's at. It doesn't. Well, why would it interest you? You know what I mean? Like yeah. you've got it all here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But before, it, it wasn't always the case like that. You know what I'm saying? People felt thought you have to move away to mm. to improve. Whereas now it's we got what we need here. Yeah. yeah I think the industry prevails. I think that I think there's a climate change of of technology and social media which allows for you to be anywhere in the world. Oh, of course, yeah. Um industry-wise, I guess 
if I'm honest with you, Karam, when I'm talking about you now in about three years' time, yeah. there may be a different conversation. You may be like, yo, I've got to go down to London. Yeah, of course. Not that you have to move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's one of them, isn't it? Yeah, no, 100%. Like, industry work in terms of, like, commercial work mm. and stuff and opportunities, of course, London's where it's at. Mm. If that's the avenue you want to go down. But in terms of competitive breaking... It's right here. It's, 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 it's not necessarily that it's right here, but we there's no other incentive for us to go anywhere else. No, no, it's right. And that's what we created as a young generation mm. because before that we probably had to mm. you know what I'm saying it's true and there is something of an exotic when you don't come from London and you're doing something that makes so much noise and impact yeah you know b-boying when it comes to London can be quite seasonal yeah do you know what I mean mm-hmm. um, when we're up here and looking around man like in, like you said clearly you're operating daily yeah what's your um What's your batting average on a on a power move, on a new move, on a on a sequence of moves where you're just like, yo, this is gonna fuck them up when I come down London <laughs> or when I get into the in the octagon, you know what I mean? What's yeah. your what's your batting average? What's your average? When you say that, what do you mean? Well, is it one in five times you go, yo, I've just come with a combo, that, or is it one in? Um, is it two? Is it three and five? Is it five and five? It's it's weird, like, cause for me, like, I I drill stuff. So when I'm here, I drill. So it has to be done two or three times perfectly before I can move on. Mm-hmm. So that's how it would be. I would run my things over and over again to make sure that when I do get on the main stage, I'm not messing up anything. Mm-hmm. But then I also have them creative times. And it's always nice sometimes as well to spend a little bit of time away. Like I said, I was kind of injured. I came back, like my first session was like last Monday. Mm-hmm. Wow, I was like made some crazy stuff, like just off the top of the dome. Mm-hmm. And I was like, made a note of that, made a note of that, made a note of that. And I have like, I have, I have like 15 rounds ready for competition always. But then I also have a reserve tank of things that I've been working on or have there that I've not perfected yet. Or I have, if I do this and I pull it off today, there's no, like you, you're getting done, like sort of thing. So I have like a whole reserve tank of stuff like that. And it's probably like, like, yeah, like a three and five average. Like they're all ready to go, but it's just having, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like you make new stuff. Yeah. And you constantly have to make new stuff, but it's also having the confidence to then do that new stuff. Yeah. It's almost just like, especially abroad, um, and it's, and it's kind of weird as well, because sometimes, like, you can treat the UK like... Like, sometimes I used to treat, like, the UK as, like, a, a playground mm. to, like, try stuff out, especially at the smaller events where, where I knew that I could, because you need to do them in a battle. Once you've done... For me, once you've done them once in a battle, you can you can do them all the time. Mm. But it's, it's doing that first time. And then also, it's like, you go to Europe and you have a name, like, I have a name now. People mm. expect a certain... They expect a thing. Yeah, they, they yeah. expect something of me. So, it's like, I have to deliver. But then sometimes I don't always enjoy what I have to deliver mm. or I don't always enjoy the stigma of having to do certain moves because I'm good at them. Do you know mm. what I mean? So it's like, I yeah. have, I have, I have my 15 rounds, which you'll usually see me do, which will see me through to a competition, mm. let's say. But then I also have probably another 10 rounds, which is crazy stuff that I haven't used yet. Mm. So I have like, and, and that's stuff where it's like, yo, I made this and this is going to like smoke somebody as soon as I pull this out sort of thing. But it's just like, just, just, and, and, and I think as I made a lot last year in the last year, let's say, but then again, we, we've been limited because of COVID. Yeah, true. So it's been, it's been really hard to actually find that confidence to, mm. to be like, oh, I got this new move. Let me show it you. Cause you don't know where it's going to, exactly. Where and then at the going. same time, you don't want to post it because if you post it, it's easy for, for other people up. to sort of like, yeah. you know what I mean? Bite it or copy it or whatever. So I have like 10, 10, 10 combos ready to go where I'm just like, and you feel good about it because it's new, but it's like at the same time, like I need that, that, that battleground to do it. Mm. But yeah, man. So yeah. Hmm, there's so much, there's so much to deconstruct there. <laughs> so much to deconstruct. Um, okay. Uh, to anybody that is outside of the loop of breakdancing, when you say you've got reserve, when you say you've written it down, when you say, like, I think for most people, and I'm talking like, you know, the Joe public, I think a lot of this uh, mystique is that you have a, a ton of signature moves and you have a ton of reserve. You have a ton of things sketched down, which I want to hear about this. Yeah. But also... When you're break dancing, you ain't able to look at what you're doing. Even if you're by the mirror, you can't see whether yeah. it looks good or not because yeah. you're in complete movement. Yeah, of course. You're in motion. So how do you know when something's good? Either the reaction of the rest of the man, they're like in the mirror or like, or like at training. Um, but generally, um, I like to film a lot, of course. Like, yeah, so yeah, I like true. to film things because I like to see how they look and stuff. Mm. And if if I'm unsure, I'll ask my friends, yo, what do you think to this? Mm. And they can give me their feedback and stuff like that. But generally, you kind of go off what well, I, I kind of go off the energy in the room. Mm. Like if I know that someone's like, yo, then I'm like, 
okay, that was good. We need to keep I that. I think we might have yeah. <laughs> We just take that one, you know, make a note of that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. But generally, like, so that that's one thing. But filming, filming is, like, really important. Yeah. And I think, like, my friends and not just, like, my friends and asking, you know, because I, I video, like I said, I video. So, for example, if I've made something and I'm like, this is dope to me, mm. but I ask you, like, what do you think of this? Sometimes it's because I want to hear you tell me that it's dope because mm. I want to feel good about that from, yeah. from the outside perspective. But then it's always good sometimes if they're like, okay, what about if you crossed your leg? Then I try it and I'm like, oh, we just took it from this level to that level. Thank you. And now I have a whole new signature. Like That's, that's what happened. Wow. Like one of, the, one of the ones I explained was like, a, I call it the mantoline. Um, it's like one of my signatures. Uh, it's like really original. It's like a, a side like 2000 like leaning. But I, I watched my friend like uh, crash. He was trying like tap me to 2000. Mm. And he kept like sort of crashing halfway and just falling back to his back. I was like, you know what, if you could do that continuously without like going too far up, like it would yeah. actually look sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then I took it. No. I, was like, I was like, yeah, I'm going to call it, and his name's Mantis and we call him Mantle. Mm-hmm. So now I call it the Mantle Lean because it's like after oh him, but like I saw him like do it and I was like, I'm going to I'm gonna make that crash a signature. That's and so I so made sick. it. Yeah, and then I, I filmed it and I showed my friends. I was like, what do you think to this? And then one of my friends was like, bro, if you hit a shape, like cross your leg, It'll be sick. Game over, yeah. So I did it and did it for the first time in like 2018 at Silverback Open um, in, a, in in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm, it was mm-hmm. my first time there and it was just, a, everyone just went nuts for it. They were like, yeah, 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 even yeah. Ivan, you know Ivan? He was hosting, he's like, he meant to do that. And I was yeah. like, yeah. Yo. <laughs> like, you know when it pays off sort of thing. 100%. Yeah, man. Yeah, hold tight, Ivan. And yeah, I, I'll tell you what, man, like when something again when you fall down and yeah. then pull it back up and it and, and it's all with the intention you've got it all studied and planned yeah, yeah. out. I love that. That's crowd control as yeah, well. Yeah, for, for sure. That blows people's minds. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Bring it on. What what's your thoughts on uh your training between now and twenty twenty four? My thoughts. There must be a uh, lot a, going on. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. Obviously it's been kind of annoying because like I said I was I was a little bit injured and last year where I was on fire like training was on fire I felt good like for a long time I felt a little bit lost in my breaking because there wasn't really anything happening mm. you know because of all the COVID and stuff it's like there's no I feel like you need that uh, you need like scalps to take you know when you go competition like you need that mm. so you can bring it back and review it when you don't have that it's kind of like oh, what's my goal what do I want to be ready for and mm. it's like we never knew when COVID was going to end so mm. I was just kind of like lost my way a little bit but last year I was like yeah man I want to be ready for when lockdown's over mm. I want to be ready for this jam and, and I really trained hard like uh, and I felt so good about my breaking did three competitions last year uh, I won all of them and it was like I felt good I was confident I was ready mm. and so now it's just still I, I, I understood what I needed to do like I won mm. the last two competitions I did so the GB trials and um just jam two on t- uh, two versus two. Uh, I didn't lose a single round, mm. but I sort of watched them back and I was like, you know what? If I did this, it would take it from this to this. Mm. So I sort of watched them and understood like what I need to do to take it from UK level to world level, having the impact I do here, there sort of thing. So Crazy. yeah, so I did that firstly, and obviously training wise is just being consistent. Mm. Like you need sometimes all it takes is like six months of hard work and you're three years ahead. You mm. know what I'm saying? You just need to knuckle down, sort of thing. So it's knuckling down again, making sure there's no distractions. Mm. Uh, I have achieved some amazing things, for example, Nike and stuff. But it doesn't stop there. That's where the work starts. Yes. And although I'm I'm eating and I'm good and you know I'm doing things and people are bigging me up and stuff, I need to just remember like. This is the start, and and it, and it, you have to keep on going from there, sort of thing. Yeah, man, it's um, it's a false economy, and like you say, you've kind of got a when people big you up, that's lovely. Yeah, everyone loves that, <laughs> of course. You know, but there's also this thing of living in the now, and and incrementally, you know, I think Arnold Schwarzenegger sells it sells it the best, but the whole idea of like every minute, every hour. Every hour, yeah. every week, every day. Da, 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 yeah, da, da, of course. Do you know what I mean? And it really is like you must be forever in the moment. Yeah, you kind of have to be right. Like, and I, and what I've noticed recently is that I, I train much better when I'm annoyed, and I battle much better when I'm annoyed. I need something that pisses me off, like so, because I'm hungry for it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's like my purpose, but like it's it's just having to be engaged in that all the time. Mm. And the moment that you switch off is sometimes the hardest time because you struggle to get back mm. in. Like after them, I'd done them co- two competitions or whatever. I was like, you know what, man, I'm gonna rest for a week now. Mm. I done, I've been going hard and I rest for a week and I just find it so hard to get back in. And then mm. I got injured because probably I didn't warm up properly it was like hot and cold sort of thing but it's like you have to make the time count and not let the time pass you by sort of thing yeah so what you're saying that you've just got to keep on going even once you've done one one um, 
competition, you've almost got to just keep on the That's, that's how I feel, yeah. Like, it's the momentum. Wow. And, and I feel like winning is a mentality as well. Like, when you win an event, you kind of keep on winning for a little bit because it's like, mm. I'm going to win. The synergy the, yeah, is seasonal. And you're, not, you're not scared of losing. Yeah, yeah. You're, not, you're not worried about losing. So mm. you never doubt yourself. You go in there like extra confident sort mm. of thing. But like you said, like it is, it is you always have to be on the go. And, and especially like creative wise as well, not even just thinking about it or just being engaged in it mentally. Like if I stop, that doesn't mean the rest of the world stops. You know what mm. I mean? These guys in Russia are going yeah, nuts right you, now. Yo, like, Your whole time <laughs> career in Russia yo, there, aren't you? <laughs> yo, for real. But it's like, it's crazy. Like, because nobody else stops. The game doesn't stop. And that's yeah. why it's so hard sometimes. And that's why when you said about timing, it's really important yeah. To, yeah. to understand timing and when you need to be on fire and when you can sort of relax a little bit. Because mm. I think it's hard for anybody to be 100%. Like hundred percent, hundred percent of the time. No, but no, no, no. Yeah, like it's hard. You, you have to, you have to pick that timing. But you can never really switch off. Like up there, and you have to be engaged in it all the time because you have to make each day count. Whether I didn't train for a week and I decided to just work out and stretch. My problem sometimes is that when I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna switch off. I'll just do nothing for a week and yeah, then yeah, I come yeah. back. And That's I'm like, the hardest oh. bit. Yeah, and it's and it's so hard. But yeah, that is hard, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you're uh, you're you're a slave to the culture. <laughs> literally, literally. Is that how it feels? Um, yeah, in, so, in the most positive way. Yeah, yeah, probably. That is that's probably the best way to put it because you you kind of have to keep on going. Mm. So there's no time to relax, and then when you do, it's not that you you, you kind of feel like you're letting people down. Because mm. when when things aren't going right for you in anything that you do, you kind of feel like the whole world's watching you. Mm. And I guess because I'm a pub in the public eye and stuff like with the whole Nike stuff, I think that. One, people would be looking up to what I'm doing and how they can get there. Mm. And two, how they, can, how they can take me out and make an example. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of like... Yeah, you don't want to be going down the wrong paths of like, I'm just, I'm just going to go down the pub. Yeah, or I'm just going to chill or like, yeah. you know what I mean? So I ha kind of have to keep on going because in the times where I'm just resting, even though I'm not doing anything, I could just be resting just for mm. rest sake. You know, I'll be looking at the rest of the world thinking, shit, I need to yeah. do something. Like everybody else is moving sort of Is thing. that gives you anxiety? The, I, the thought of like, you know, all these other countries like... Heading on fast footing behind you, I guess it could. It yeah, could. I'm, I'm quite so. strong, so yeah. I don't really let things sort of get me down like that because I just feel like if I'm down, I'll just work harder so I get up mm. again. You know what I mean? That's like my personal thing about it. Like, I don't dwell on anything. I like yeah, to keep, yeah, I don't imagine you I do. like to keep on moving. And mm. if someone's bothering me, I'll just work through it until I feel I'll do something that makes me feel good about myself. For example, do a run or do some training. Yes. You know, like it's just, it's just stuff like that. And in the end, like just putting yourself to something putting your mind to something productive mm. you'll come out of that after a couple of months when you're over whatever's bothered you yeah. and you'll be like yo shit, i'm grateful for myself for pushing myself to mm. do that so if you feel down about you know a loss or people chasing you from other countries or somebody trying to make an example of you just work hard and in a couple of months you'll thank yourself for it and be ready to what, mm. whatever's next with them you know what i mean 100 percent. that's how i feel with that yeah man uh if you're if you're in not in the mood to break dance but you still have to attain, you know, keep up with the uh, momentum and the uh, re regime. You go for a run. If you're uh, feeling like you want to break dancing and you're angry, put some hip hop on and start going for it. Yeah. Uh, all these variables that kind of trigger you to to just keep going. Yeah. With Team GB and and the Olympics on its way, do you find are you torn often between am, am I an athlete or am I a b boy? And I know that I know they're all one in the same on my end. Yeah. <laughs> but but I guess from a, a, a athletic point of view, you're doing everything that you've always done forever. Yeah. But as a b boy, you've been doing everything you've done forever. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, they've always been parallel. But now yeah. I, I'm guessing like you, you've got to kind of prioritize one because of the extremity of the uh, uh, of the proposition. You're gonna go to the fucking Olympics. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, hundred percent. Like for me, I think there's like. I think you always have to realise that there's a difference in mm. it because like it's all right saying that you're an athlete or you're a dancer and there's always that, that debate and stuff like that. But for me personally, I feel like when I'm cre in my creative phase of creating moves and stuff, I'm an artist. Mm. Like, that's how I am because I have to create and that's what I do. But when it comes to competition, I'm an athlete because I, I create like an artist and perform like an athlete. You know what I mean? Mm. And it's like, like I said, with things becoming so much more professional and the, the demands on the body and stuff mm. like that, like obviously it's all like physiological and stuff as well now that we have to think of like we have to have that athletic mind and have people around us that have that athletic knowledge for us to be the best that we can be mm. and peak in the right times for competitions mm. because it's all right saying you're we're going to the olympics in 2024 we can do every single jam hopefully don't get injured every single jam yeah, that comes yeah, yeah, up yeah. until then you get to the olympics and you're burnt out 
It's true. So we need to have that sort of athletic mind, I guess. We, yeah. we kind of have to be professional or we have to be athletes as such. So I do see myself as an it's athlete, true. but I also see myself as an artist because I have to create and, and, mm. and keep that up as well. Yeah, there's so, a creative yeah. side, huge creative side to it. Yeah. Moves that aren't really even in the, that manual. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just always something new. How are they ever going to judge this? It's mad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of the biggest questions out there, too. Yeah. yeah. And who's got the copyright on the music when it's <laughs> being played? That's what I want to know. Yo, for real, for real. Yo, I, think, I think they'll have that down. They'll, yeah. they'll be cool with that because I think, like, obviously you've got your Red Bulls and stuff right yeah. now anyway. And, and they're always popping they're as well. Like, yeah. I'll tell you, UK Breakdowns Championships as well. All yeah, time, of course, man. All day. I think that's on June yeah, this year. That's right. About June this year, Cross. I think. Yeah, we got yeah. this. Um, yeah, man. It's a fruitful time. It's a fruitful time. All right, layman's favourite move right now. My, if, my come favorite on, one move of your, right one now. of your favorite moves right now, whether it's you or someone else, who's out there, or is it you? <sighs> give us your move. My favorite, I'll give you a couple. My favorite move to do is munch mills because they're so easy to do. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's so easy to do. So when someone's like, do a move, I'm like, all right, cool. And it looks cool too. Um, yeah, and it just pops, it pops. <laughs> Literally, yeah. my special move is, of course, the head spin drill. Yes. Like, that's what everybody loves to see. Crazy. So I like when I hit one of them, mm. when you hit the sweet spot. Um, but sweet was, spot? Yeah. Talk to me about the sweet spot. Sweet spot, man. You just know when you when you feel it, you know, you're when you get pocket. to your head and you're just like, yeah, 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 yeah. and you can just feel it and you know you're going to keep on going and going and going. What's going through your head, literally, when you're, it's just complete and utter. Once I've got fast like two spins, I'm like, yes. Freedom. Like, yeah. Yes, this is freedom. And you know, because you can feel everybody going, yeah. oh, behind you. So yeah. as soon as you drop out of it, you can just kind of get off and be like, yeah, what? And just style it out a little bit. It's that, that extra swag sort of thing. But generally, yeah. like my favorite move, um, I like to see like people like Pocket, the power moves, those, mm. where they mm. do like uh, the mm. one-handed air flares mm. and stuff. Or some of the younger power movies. There's, there's yeah. a crazy one from Japan right now. He's really young. His name's Hero 10. Oh, Hero and 10 is one for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, don't, I can't even explain some of the moves that he does. I can't even like describe the names of them because mm. he's... Changing the game of his power moves. There's a lot of people doing that stuff as well. Lee from the Ruggeds is another mm. one, like, sort of Yo. innovating in a... Tightly yeah. Ruggeds group. Uh, tell me, uh, how much of an asset is it social media in allowing you to figure out what other people are doing? It's, it's bait, massive, it? Yeah, bait. It's, bait. it's so bait. And it's, and it's one of them weird ones as well because it's you kind of need it to stay relevant. Mm. By the same time, you don't want to be bait. So that's why it's quite hard because you've got people like, you know, Instagram Reels, for example, he's like 30 mm. second clip or whatever. Do something nuts. Do something that mm. no one's ever seen before. Everyone's like, whoa. Yeah. And that's what's going to get your views. But at the same time, you want to kind of hold that back yeah. and you want to save that of competition, but you can't really, like, mm. you, you have to, but it's, it's a struggle to because otherwise what are you going to post? The same stuff that you've been posting for three years. Bro, it's like, the same with beatbox yeah. and the same with DJs as well. You know, they're spinning for half an hour, an hour, yeah, yeah. In, in, you know, on Twitch or something. Yeah. And then they've just, you know what I mean? It's mad, isn't it? <laughs> club set gone. Exactly. Yeah, I think we're all at the mercy of it. It's just the difference with you guys is there's a title at stake. Exactly. <gasps> there's a major title at stake. Major title. It's major. What's gonna, What's it going to be like when you hold that trophy up, my brother? I'm just come back. I'll be a legend. I'm retiring after that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'm done after that. No, he's going to be no. teaching your asses here, right here. Right here, man. Going so out <laughs> but no, I think it would be like the greatest one of, of them all, you know what I mean? Because mm. me, I've always wanted to be the best in the world, let's say. Um, I'm still so young. I still have so much time to mm. sort of achieve that. Mm. I've obviously won a couple of world champs like events. I've won a couple of major events. You know, mm. I've been, a, been around with the best. I've been at BC1 and stuff like that. Mm. And I still have so much more time to do all of that again mm. and try and prove that. And I think, like, of course, I mean, everyone's going to have their own favourites and their opinions mm. and stuff, but I don't think there's anything bigger than winning the Olympics. So <sighs> if I can win the Olympics, man, then, you know what I mean? We Born could. into the game, brother. There's exactly. no reason why you ain't. Exactly, bro. We've got enough time to do it, too. Yeah, we do. So. Hell yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for allowing us into the humble abode, my brother. Yeah, anytime, man. Thanks for having me on this amazing podcast. And yeah. hopefully we can do it again, bro. My brother, we are... Okay. Yeah, we we invited any time, people. That's what I'm saying. Big up, Cram. That's a lot, my brother. Yeah, Thank you, man. Killer Killer Podcast out like in was out of fashion. How's that? Yeah, keeping it raw and rugged. Street culture. All right. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't share in his caring. You know what it do. We're out like in was out of fashion. Peace. Peace.